Biventricular pacemakers have a left ventricular lead. In this lesson, I'm going to explain how we position this lead because unlike a right atrial lead, which can pass down through the vena cava into the right side of the heart, and also with the right ventricular lead, which can go through the superior vena cava, through the tricuspid valve, and into the right ventricle of the heart, the left ventricular lead would actually have to puncture through the atrial septum or the ventricular septum if we were to use this pathway to position the left ventricular lead. This obviously creates more trauma for the patient and is something that we want to avoid. The solution lies with the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus is the ostium, the pathway if you like, to your coronary veins. And we use this pathway. So, under fluoroscopy, the left ventricular lead will be passed down through the superior vena cava into the right atrium, but will then be directed into the coronary sinus. At this point, it goes out the back of the heart into the coronary veins. The lead is then moved along these coronary veins, round the outside of the heart, and positioned in a suitable vein on the outside wall of the left ventricle. Let us look at this on a see-through heart. So here we have the coronary sinus. We would pass the left ventricular lead into the coronary sinus, out the back of the heart. It would go around and come round the side into the coronary veins, and then we would wedge it in place. Now fixing the lead in this way actually poses a small problem in itself. So, the way we do it is all dependent on the shape of the lead. We do have a straight lead, but this has small tines on it and is really most suitable for torturous and windy coronary veins. If the veins are somewhat straighter, we use bends that are fixed into the leads to wedge them in place. We can see that here with a lead that's been positioned via the coronary sinus. The left ventricular lead goes out around through the coronary veins and is wedged into a suitable position. Now remember, just because something goes into a space doesn't mean it's necessarily going to come out. And actually, the shape, size and dimension of this poor goat's head has prevented it from retrieving it once it's in position. And that is how our left ventricular leads work. Does the fact that the left ventricular lead is really on the outside of the heart affect its performance? Well, no. And think of a door. If you were to knock on a door from the outside, it would make a noise. If you knock on a door from the inside, you still make a noise. And it's the same effect. You know, the force is still being applied to the heart tissue. So, pacing and sensing works in exactly the same way. One thing I want to mention at this point is that as we have an additional lead, we also have additional electrodes. Now we know that we can use different electrodes to create different pacing circuits. Because we have an additional lead, we have a few more circuits. And these additional circuits and options that we have can be used to troubleshoot and can be very helpful. For this lesson, however, your takeaway message is a left ventricular lead is positioned on the outside wall of the left ventricle. It is wedged into a coronary vein.